is overcome, we will not be shaken, we will not be moved, Jesus you are
so good. You've been so good. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. My heart is full. My heart is full. I love you, Lord. I love you. Would you sing? You've been so good. You've been so good. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. My heart is full. My heart is full. My heart is full. Yeah.
give a shout of praise unto heaven this morning. Come on, I said with everything you have. Somebody give him praise. Yeah. 
your voice in this place. Oh, someone just give him the praise that he's worthy of. You don't need these songs. You don't need my words. Someone just lift him up today. Not for what he can do for you. Not even for what he has done for you, but for who he is. Yes, 
Love on the name of Jesus. Just take a minute and just lift up the name of Jesus. If all you can just say is, You are holy, you are worthy. If all you can say is, Thank you. If all you can just say is, Oh, someone lift your voice and word. You're so holy. You're so worthy, you're so sovereign, you're so powerful, you're so glorious. for a miracle from you I just want to spend time in your presence just to sit at your feet just to sit and sing at the feet of Jesus how wonderful you are how beautiful you are how wonderful you are how beautiful you are how powerful
Just lift your voices to the Lord. Give him some praise today. Got to be a shout in the house today. Yeah. Yeah, Lord. Hallelujah.
there seems to be no way. He makes a way. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, we love you today. We come just to worship you, just to praise your name, to talk about your goodness and your mercy and your grace today. Lord, to stir. Mm. Am I the only one that can sense that God's doing a new thing? That there's just a, a new way going on. Something new is happening today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. with thanksgiving today thanksgiving in our heart and our lives Lord we come today just to seek you just to seek you in our lives that nothing else matters except for you oh God we thank you today and we give you praise we give you glory today. amen 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 We're going to have our ushers come. We're going to receive your Sunday morning tithes and offerings. We want to just thank you for your faithfulness. God is always faithful. I pray that we are as faithful to God as he is to us. Amen. And when we give of our offering, we don't give to get, although the Bible says he'll bless you 30, 60, 100 fold. We give but just out of gratefulness, out of thanksgiving, Lord, for what you've done, the way you've blessed us. I am just so thankful for living water. I'm so thankful for your faithfulness. You haven't given up. 
even in the hard times, you haven't given up. It's so easy not to tithe. As soon as something goes wrong in your life, it's so easy just to give up. But you are staying faithful. And as a result, we're able to stay faithful in the things that God has called us to do. And so I just thank you today. Lord, bless this offering now in the name of Jesus. And bless each and every one. There's some here that are looking for a, a, a promotion, looking for a better job. I pray that you would send it their way. There are some here that's looking to buy their, their first home. I just pray your blessings right now that you would open up the doors for them. Lord, there are others that are, are just have financial needs and, and some bills that need to be paid off. Lord, just provide a way right now in the name of of Jesus serve the people. Amen, amen. Yes, welcome to Living Water. We thank each and every one of you for coming out today. I have some ladies joining me here, and they're going to be talking about all of you beautiful women who are in the house. Do we have any ladies here in the house? Hey, ladies, welcome to Living Water today. Hey, today is... Um, today is our national uh, women's uh, leading. I'm so sorry. I messed the whole thing up. Will you forgive me? Let's start all over again. It is that. Excuse me. It's, it's the AG National Women's Day is today. So congratulations, ladies. That's why all of you got a little carnation as you came in today. Can we have all the women to just stand real fast and stand up? Because you are in ministry. And no matter what you do as a witness or testimony, you're in ministry. Whether you want to be or not, I'm just saying you are in ministry. Congratulations. You may have a seat. I also want to honor... Um, as you know, my heart is being in prayer all night last night. I, could, I didn't even sleep because I just said, Lord, and my heart gets real big talking about this. And I said, Lord, there are so many Christians in Ukraine that needs our prayer and all over. So we need to consider taking a week, a day this week, and fast whatever you do, just fast whatever and pray for our Christian fellowships. And even if they're not, that they will become Christians after all of this is over. So I'm just saying, last night I told the Lord, I said, I got a nice warm bed. I got a roof over my head. I am so thankful amen, amen. That, that I have this. However, Lord, my heart wants to rejoice for all the Christians in Ukraine, and I'll tell you why. Because when that's over, the rejoicing's going to come. Because when you've gone through valleys, you rejoice. I don't know if you know that, but I rejoice every valley I go through. And I, and I love Nehemiah 8 when it talks about rejoicing the Lord. So we got to realize that God is going to do something really big through all the bad things that happen. All good things are there, too. And we've got to look at it that way for our sisters and brothers in the Lord. And can you say amen for me? Amen. 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 Well, ladies, thank you so much. Where is Pastor Chrissy? Thank you so much for ministering here at Living Water. This is Dr. Mariana. She's our women's leader. Does a wonderful job. She does an awesome job. Coming out in March the 9th is our women's meeting again and we have a guest speaker for you ladies and her name she's an evangelist and her name is glenda monsavage um she was actually not in this service but she comes to our church here and she actually was healed of cancer when she was 20 some years old so her testimony is amazing so you don't want to miss it ladies come and hear what she has to say Amen, amen. Well, we do have some other announcements as well. So I'm going to talk a little fast for you. Um, if you came in today, you should have received a bulletin. And on there are some announcements of some things that we have coming up. We have a new life class starting on March 3rd. So if you'd like to get plugged into our discipleship classes and maybe you're a new believer wanting to learn how to pray and read your word, then you can get plugged into New Life. This will be through Zoom. And you can sign up for this class in the foyer behind you at the iPads. And then this Wednesday, everybody say this Wednesday, Wednesday is our first Wednesday revival night. Are you guys excited about Wednesday? 
So come on out this Wednesday. We're going to be having our guest speaker, James Powell, and he is the campus pastor at Southeastern University. Southeastern is a, an Assembly of God University here in Lakeland, uh, so not too far away. So he's going to come and uh, preach to us. We have our food trucks coming at 530 and the bounce houses will be up. So if you want to get here a little early and have dinner at the food trucks, then you can join us a little early and the service will start at 7. And as Pastor Debbie said, women's ministry will be March 9th. And um, we also want to welcome all of you but especially those of you who may be guests with us for the very first time. So if this is your first time worshiping with us today, can you wave at me right where you are and say hello? Anyone your very first time today? God bless you, God bless you. Welcome, welcome. Our ushers are gonna come around, just wave at them, and they're gonna give you an information card where we would love to learn more about you um, and also give you more information about us and how we can be here for you and your family. So bring that card, fill it out um, at the Welcome Center, and our team will be there to give you a gift. And we just thank you for coming. We know that you could have chosen any place, and you chose to be here with us today in the house of God. Well, um, next Sunday is going to be Choir Sunday, and uh, we're so excited about that. If you want to join us on stage and be in the choir, uh, we would love to have you. So we have a quick video for you, all right? God bless you. Good morning, church. My name is Caitlin, and I'm a part of our worship team and creative department here at Living Water. On behalf of Pastor Jordan and our entire creative team, we want to invite you to join our choir. Sunday, March 6th, will be our big choir Sunday. So if you have a lot of energy, can make a joyful noise, and have a heart of praise and worship, then this is for you. Thursday, March 3rd, will be our rehearsal at 7 p.m., and sign-up sheets are in the lobby. Hope to see you there. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Does that work? Can I be in the choir? <laughs> Can you do that backwards? Re, mi, so. I don't know. I'm out. They didn't vote me in this year. I got voted off the island. We have, we have some baby dedications. Hey, Romans. Well, that's a big family. All of you guys live here in town where you live. That's a little far to drive. <laughs> the Bible says in Matthew, it says little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. And Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. I think it looks just like that. Just like these children. The presenting of a baby and dedication is actually a very serious matter. It involves responsibilities with which we shall be charged. A responsibility which God has promised to take upon himself toward each life which is put in his care. But that very first responsibility comes to the parents. I mean, we come, when we give a baby in baby dedications, we, we're, what we're doing is we're coming and we're saying, God, we thank you for such a wonderful gift. What a precious gift, right? Even on those sleepless nights. And does he sleep all night? Yes. Yeah? Now? No. Now? <laughs> does he sleep all night? Thank you, Jesus. Even when you're a little bit on the weary side, you know that these children are a gift from God. You got to keep telling yourself that when they turn 16, right? Just remind yourself. But today we, we come and we're giving back to the Lord what he has given to us. And that's a wonderful thing. And then we're saying to the Lord, Lord, we're going to do everything we can in order to lead these children in the right way. 
Listen, the world wants the children to go the wrong direction, right? We all know that. So it's our job. It's our duty to make sure that they're headed in the right direction. So parents, first responsibility goes to you. And I want you to listen to the charge and then answer I do. And the charge is simply this, that you're going to live an exemplary life before your child and that your child by example, not what you say, but what you do, will know what it means to be a Christian. That you're going to make your home a school where your child is going to continue to receive Christian instruction. And you're going to see to it that you're going to make sure your children get to church to hear additional instruction of the word and and quite honestly I just want to charge the dads that you got to lead the way in that you got not not the wives the dad's got to lead the way and when the dad comes everybody comes amen and that you're going to pray daily for your children's salvation and that you purpose in your hearts to lead your child to the Lord and if you're willing to accept this charge answer I will And then look at this family, big families, big church. The family present has a vital role in nurturing these children. The church, which accepts a baby in dedication, also assumes that responsibility before the Lord. And in view of this responsibility, I charge you family present and congregation that you will do all you can to provide and support a place of worship and instruction right here at Living Water Fellowship. And should they continue to live in this area, may they hear the full counsel of God's word. And that we will covenant together to set an example by our own lives. In other words, rather than as the disciples were shooing the children away, we're welcoming them. And they sense that they are welcomed into the house of the Lord by family and by our congregation. And that is God reminds you that you will pray for these children's salvation. And if you're willing to accept this charge, answer, I will. I said, answer, I will. will. That's not bad. That's not bad. All right. Well, let's see. We're going to go right here to Romans. This is Romans Ray Solano. How you doing, Romans? You doing good? Huh? Where's my wife? Come on over here, baby. Oh, what? Wait a minute. We now have great grandchildren. We've been married for a long time. 47 years, right? 48, 48, 49 in August? 48, well then it ain't 48 yet. We're almost there though. Hey Romans, can I hold you? Yeah, give me five. Okay, that's good. Yeah, I think he did. (laughs) Oh, look at this. Doesn't this make you want to just go home and have one? (laughs) Oh, oh, Oh. say hello, Romans. Say hello. Lord, we thank you. I thank you for Romans. I pray that your hand would be upon them and this family. And Lord, we just come and we lift him up to you. And Lord, we give him back to you. Lord, we thank you for this wonderful gift of God. And then he's on loan from heaven, on loan to us to raise and just share with him the good news about Jesus. Now bless Romans in the name of the Father and the Son. Oh, don't start, don't start. And the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. No, he's getting ready to cry. <laughs> we headed that off at the pass. Yes. Huh? You know this guy? Hmm? Hmm? How you doing? Hmm? You doing good? Where'd my wife go? Julian, now this one's a little bigger. He's old enough to know better. 
So when I take him, he might, oh, he's asleep. We're going to keep it that way. <laughs> Julian Abel Ruiz. Julian. Hey, Julian. Okay, let's secretly do it. Boys. He said, the lights are in my eyes. How old is he? Year and a half? Year and a half. I think our great grandson's this big and he's only six months. <laughs> Can you do that? You'll have to show him the pictures. He won't remember this. He's sleeping through the whole thing. Lord, thank you today for Julia. God, may your hand be upon him. May you bless him and keep him. Pray for this family. Lord, I just pray that each one would be an example for this young man. Just to be able to serve you and to worship you in the house of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. We dedicate him in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Look at that. Yeah, he's heavy. <laughs> yeah, he's like 16 years old already. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Let's give these guys a great big hand. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for coming from New York. All right. It is good to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. We... We have a, a wonderful guest speaker today. You are going to enjoy him. And we're going to ask Brother Ken Gobb to come. Ken and I go back for, for a little ways. He's, he's been here quite a few times. He uh, did a conference here in Orlando with pastors from across America uh, that all came called the Idea Exchange. And, and so... Uh, we were at it. I was at it Monday and Tuesday. And uh, so we've asked him to come and just share the good news of Jesus a little bit different. Just take whatever I am, multiply it times 100. Come on over here, Ken. This is like the Energizer Bunny right here that never runs down. We are glad to have you, brother. It's all yours. Amen, amen. You need a mic, right? I need a, mic. I need a microphone. Amen. Everybody excited? Yeah. Stand with me for a moment. I think we ought to just thank God for what he's going to do in our lives. Yeah. Don't ask him for nothing. Just thank him right now. Say, Lord, we thank you for what you're doing. Hallelujah. We give you praise and glory today. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. Give somebody a smile before you sit down. Can you do that? All right. Well, I'm glad I'm here today. I look forward to coming to this church. I love this church. I love you, pastors. Amen. They got good stuff going. Good things. Pastor Christie said something about a live something, a live meeting. That's better than a dead one. I like good things, don't you? Yeah. Amen. Well, I got to tell you, I, <clears throat> I'm learning a lot of stuff. Uh, my wife passed away a year ago, went to be with the Lord. I took her around the world seven times. I took her to over a hundred in 10 countries. I took her to Israel 150 times. And then she went to heaven without me. <laughs> just crazy, just took off. <laughs> Closed her eyes on earth and then a split second opened them in heaven. Hallelujah. God is a big God, isn't he? 
So I'm learning a lot of stuff. I never did housework in my life. I don't know about housework. I can't even make coffee. So I was trying to figure that all out, how to do all that stuff. My daughter helped me. She said, I'll teach you how to cook. So she said, the top button on the right side of the microwave, you push it in. <laughs> and I did that. I had a chicken salad that needed heating, so I put it in the microwave, and the chicken got heated, and the salad blew up. <clears throat> I don't know, just had a terrible time trying to figure everything out. I learned how to run the washer. My daughter came to my house and, and said, looked in the dishwasher and she said, it's full of food. I said, it's a dishwasher. <laughs> she said, did you wash the dishes before you put them in there? I said, no. I thought it was a dishwasher. <laughs> she said, you have to wash them before you put them in. I said, then why do we have a dishwasher? <laughs> so see, I'm learning all that kind of stuff that I never knew anything about. Learn how to wash the clothes. I, I had to wash them twice because the first time I didn't use soap. <laughs> and then I had to do it over. And then I called my daughter and the, and the thing was two foot too short, shrunk. My daughter said, you got it on sideways. So I fixed it and got it working. And then I tried to tuck it in and the other side came out. Did you ever do that in making the bed? And I went and tucked it in, this side came out. I called my daughter and said, do I nail one side down until I get the other side working? I can't figure this stuff out. And the vacuum cleaner didn't work. She said, you have to plug it in. And it still didn't work. And then you had to find a switch. You know, they do something with them vacuum cleaners. The switch, they hide it so you can't find it way down under there somewhere. I finally got it working and then it didn't vacuum it. You have to push it. All kinds of things I'm learning how to do in the house. It's a difficult thing. But I'll learn how, right? I'll figure it out someday how it all works. And I'm learning all that kind of stuff. I got to tell you, I was, I was at TSA. How many know TSA at the airport? Take scissors again. That's what that means. And I went through to his TSA and they said, did anybody put anything in your luggage you don't know about? <laughs> I said, sir, I am only qualified to answer intelligent questions. <laughs> That's a stupid question. If I don't know about it, how can I answer you? <laughs> he said, it is stupid. <laughs> Forget that. I said, okay. He said, have you been around anybody with COVID-19? I said, I don't even know about COVID-18. <laughs> and another guy came over and said, who is this guy? And there were three of them standing there trying to figure me out. It was crazy. And they said, uh, uh, you don't know about that? I said, no, I don't know. I don't go around checking people. I'm not a doctor. You know, doctors, they do things. You go to the doctor, they say, how are you? You tell him, and he charges you. And so I said, I don't know about that. They said, well, have you been tested? I said, yes. When did you get tested? I said, yesterday. And what was the plan? I said, I tested positive. And these other two guys are freaking out. I said, what are you flying to Ohio for if you're testing positive? I said, now that's an intelligent question. I can answer that. I'm flying to Ohio because it is quicker than walking. <laughs> See, I can answer intelligent questions. So these guys didn't know what to think. And he said, when did you get tested? I said, yesterday, and I tested positive. He said, well, that's crazy. And they were, I know they were whispering among themselves trying to figure out what, two of them didn't know me trying to figure out what was what. And they said, well, wh where did you get tested? I said, I tested myself. They said, you can't test yourself. I said, I did. I said, how do you test yourself? I said, I opened the Bible <clears throat> and I read that I'm created in the image of God. And God doesn't do one thing negative. Everything that God does is positive. 
So when God made me, he made me a positive force in a negative world. And so I test positive every day. And my friends test positive, and I don't hang out with negative people. He said, just go on. So I went on through, and another guy came and said, who was that guy that tested positive? They said, um, he's a, an 11 million mile flyer with United Airlines. And he's in the airport all the time, and he's different. <laughs> he said, but he tested positive. And this TSA man, I love this part, because this TSA man was not even a Christian yet. And he said, well, we all tested positive. We're made in the image of God. And God created us a positive force in the negative world. I tell you, they weren't even Christians. They started witnessing. Test, how many test positive this morning? Well, the Lord, amen. So God is a big God. God has answered prayer, amen. Hey, man, I'm excited. You know, we had a wonderful um, conference here in, in Orlando, an ID exchange. It was great. Your pastor, Terry, helped make it a success. And we just had a wonderful time. I, I just really enjoyed it. I love when people are positive, don't you? Amen. I don't like negative things. I was in California, and an amusement park, they wanted me to go down the slide I said, I can't do that. They said, you're a faith man. Go down the slide. I said, no. Psalms 26.1 26, 26, says, I will not go down the slide. <laughs> you read it in the Bible, 26.1. So I didn't go down the slide. But I like positive people, positive things. And I picked up the bulletin this morning, said, guest speaker, Ken Gobb, February 27, and here are the sermon notes and there weren't any in there. <laughs> I have to make them up. So I'm glad I'm here today. I love this church. I love you people, and I love your pastors. You are privileged to be under the leadership that you're under in this great church right here. All of them. I love them so very, very much. And I want to talk a little bit this morning about changing your future now making a change now. Sometimes we have to do things right now. How many know that? Amen. And if you don't change your future, fake news, how many know about fake news? Right. Fake news will change it for you. They are spreading fear every day. They're talking negative stuff every day. They make up new stuff every day. And I know the world's in trouble. We border this morning on a nuclear war, and we need to pray. Can you say an amen? amen? I talked to some of the pastors uh, in the Ukraine yesterday, prayed with them, and they're looking for them. They're rounding up pastors and political people and teachers and people of influence. They've already killed 5,000. We need to pray for our friends over there. Amen? Amen that God will help them and protect them. And I told the pastors, I said, I'm going to pray with you that God will make you invisible. How many believe God could do something like that? God can make you invisible. They never heard of it. I didn't either. I made it up. But I believe God can make us invisible. I said, God will help you and will protect you and keep you from harm. And they're believing for that. So if we want something we've never had in our life, we got to do something maybe we've never done. I witness to people all the time. I think everybody needs to do that. You don't have to know much about the Bible. You know what God did for you, and you can share it. I share it with everybody. I turn everything into soul winning anyway. My wife said to me one time, she said, don't you ever give anybody a decent answer? I said, yeah, I, I turned it into soul. When I was on the plane, they served me a meal. When I got done, they said, picked up my tray. They said, are you finished? I said, no, I'm Jewish. <laughs> and then I'd open the door, and there's all kinds of ways to witness. How many know that? And I just have fun sharing my faith, winning people. I think everybody can do it. 
And so I believe that if we want to have the best in our life, we can't go around talking about the worst. You can't have sunshine if you keep talking about the storms. When my wife passed away, <clears throat> the devil spoke to me and said, Ken, with what you face financially and everything, you can't withstand the storm you're going through. I said, devil, you get behind me. I'm the one that's victorious. I am the storm. I'll take care of you. Amen. God is a big God. And God will help me, and God will lead me, and God will guide me if we put God first in our life. The Bible said, seek the Lord first and his righteousness, and then these other things. How many ever read that? These other things. You ever wonder what that was? These other things. Say things. The other things will be added unto you. We can put God first in our life, and God will take care of the other things like our family, like the finances, like whatever that we face in our life. Everybody faces something. I had a son 10 years ago that was killed in a motorcycle wreck, and it was not a good day. The Bible said all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. And we believe things can work together for good. But we don't understand everything. And everything, he didn't say everything was good. Some things are pure garbage. How many understand that? But it can work together. God will help us if we think about the good stuff. Now, what are we talking about here? If you turn your Bible to Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7, the Bible said the peace of God, which passes all understanding, you can't even figure it out, passes all understanding, will keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. But the next verse says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true and honest and just and pure and lovely and good report, you won't find that on CNN, Ch Communist News Network. You won't find it there. Isn't that true? Yes. The good stuff you find in God's Word. Yes. But it said, whatsoever these things are good and of good report, there be any virtue, there be any praise, Think on these things. So if our thinking isn't right, we have to change it. Yes. See, I believe everybody can be a witness. My brother passed away the other day. It was the most unusual thing I ever saw in my life. He didn't handle COVID good, and his body was too heavy, and he passed away. But as he was leaving... He said, I'll be with Jesus in a little bit. It was hard to believe. They made a video. He made a video. His wife made a video of him. He gave away his car to a lady in the church that didn't have a car. He gave away his truck. He gave away his motorcycle. He gave away his stuff. It's just stuff anyway. Isn't that true? He gave it away on film. And he told jokes while he was dying. My brother is crazy. He said, I'll be with Jesus in a little bit, but I want to get rid of this stuff. He said, God wants me to do that. Man, oh man, he gave me an old lantern that he made. He said, Ken will like this camping lantern because he hates to camp. <laughs> he did all kinds of things. He said, I'll be with Jesus shortly. Isn't that it something? I tell you, I love people that are on the positive side of life. And he lived a positive life. He was not a minister, but he had a ministry. Everybody can have a ministry. Everybody can touch somebody's life. Everybody can do something. Amen? Amen. We have to put God first in our life. Say, I want to put God first. When you get involved with God, God's going to get involved with you. And God will take care of you. And the Bible said all these things are good to think about. Think on these things. Say the word think. think. Think on these things. When we think about the good stuff that God has, we ought to be excited about that. I get excited thinking about the good things. Don't think about the bad things. There's enough bad things in the world. I was driving along one day and I had a guy with me. And he said, do you hear that bump on the tire? I said, I don't hear no bump on the tire. I bought a brand new set of tires. They're brand new. 
He said, I hear a bump. <laughs> we drove on and I started listening. I finally heard it. I couldn't believe it. And then the tire blew out. I stopped the car. He said, you want me to help you change it? I said, no, you've done enough damage already. <laughs> I blamed him for it. We got out. I jacked it up and we cha I changed the tire. We took the tire in to get an adjustment because it was guaranteed for the life of the tire. They said when the tire blew out, that was the life of the tire. <laughs> so I didn't want that again. I, I like, I got some Goodyear tires the other day. I like tires going around saying Goodyear, 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 Goodyear. <laughs> I like that. I like to see something like that. We need tires that good day, good month, good week, good week, good month, hallelujah, good year. We're going to have a good year. Hallelujah. We're going to believe God. We're going to think on the good things. Don't think about the bad things. There's enough bad things happen. How many ever had something bad happen? <laughs> Four people. I like this church, Pastor. It's, these people are, are good. I, I joined this church. God is a big God. We get what we believe for. If you believe for something good, the Bible said, think on these things. Let's get involved with God. What do you say? Amen. Trust God every day of your life. Seek the Lord first. We have to put God first, and then these other things will be taken care of. God will take care of them. We don't have to worry about them. Some things you don't have to worry about. I never worried about housework. Now I'm learning how to do it. And living by myself with my dog. God is a big God, and he cares about us. He's not trying to kill us. He said, I've come that you might have what? Life, Life and have it how? Life. You know that. God came, sent Jesus to take care of us. He took care of the death. And you know we don't die. Yet we, we close our eyes on earth, we open them in heaven. How about that? I prayed the other day. I said, God... I prayed to Jesus. I said, Jesus, I love you. I want you to send a couple angels over to my wife's mansion and get a couple of those bricks of gold and send them down here so we can pay ministry bills. <laughs> I tell you, you know, I, I talk. I believe the Lord's getting ready to get the white horse up there. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe, they got animals in heaven. Did you know that? The lamb lays down with what? The lion. The lion. Yeah, lion and lambs up there. God, Jesus got a white horse up there ready. How about that? I believe dogs go to heaven. Cats go to hell. But I just believe that. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. We got to get off of that. But, you know, they just, they just, I just am that way. It's just one of those things. It's a personal thing, Pastor. I don't think God should have made cats. And I think Noah should have drowned those two when he had a chance. <laughs> he could have thrown them overboard and it had been the end of the cat thing. <laughs> then you go to Alaska, they got dog sleds up there. They ain't got no cat sleds. <laughs> Something wrong with that cat thing. I, my wife liked cats. I don't like cats at all. It's just, it's just a thing with me. I just don't like cats. One pastor was getting uh, pies. A lady brought him a pie every week. Gave him a pie, but it was full of cat hairs. She had 30 cats in her house. And the cat hairs got in the pie. He went out and painted a black spot on the garbage can. Down the, threw the pie on it. And later when she said, how did you, did you get along with that pie? He said it hit the spot. <laughs> and so you have to be careful. You know, that's why when I read things in the Bible, I know the Lord has got all kinds of stuff in there. Amen? And he told us things, and I try to believe all of these things. He wants to help us. He wants to encourage us. And we have to take good input in our life. That's why I read books and tapes and videos. And I've got some of Well, I ran out of most of it, but I can send them to you if you want them. But God is a big God. And he's trying to help us. He's trying to help us, so we need a good input in our life. Coming to this church, and I'm not here just to brag on you, but coming to this church, you have good input in this church. There's a lot of programs. I never saw so many things. Isn't that wonderful? 
We thank God for it. Give yourself a hand for that. Say, I praise God we go to church like that. Hallelujah. There's always good things. The Bible said, think on these things. Whatsoever things are pure and honest and good and just and of good report, think on these things. We have to think about the good things. God is on our side. David said in the Bible, the Lord is on my side. You know, one time I got a letter in the mail. I got to tell you this. It was the nicest letter I ever got in my life. It said, Dear Ken, you're a wonderful guy. You win souls. You talk to everybody about Jesus. And it was just all full of good stuff. I never got a letter like it in my life. It didn't tell any about any bad points I had. It just talked about the good things. And I read it to my wife. And she said, wow, where did you get that letter? I said, I sent it to myself. (laughs) And I did. I wrote that letter and I mailed it. I couldn't wait to get it. I never got a letter like that before. And I knew it was a good letter because I wrote it. I found that letter the other day. I was so, it was so, it was a great thing. I found it and I thought, well, here, here it is again. God is a big God and he wants us to believe him and trust him. So I, I have good things in my life. You never let bad things filter into your life. Don't let negative people filter into your life. People to hijack your future because God wants to help you. Amen. Some of you that are older remember the name Wilma Rudolph. She was born in poverty in America. She lived in a dump of a house. It was pitiful the way she lived. When she was four years old, she had double pneumonia, scarlet fever, and was crippled with life for polio. With polio. And the doctor told her mom, she will never walk in her life. And they put crutches on her, braces on her legs. She fell down. She got up. She couldn't walk hardly. Her mom was a Christian. Thank God for that. And her mom said she will walk again. I love people who talk faith. I love people like that. Like that guy that was fishing. He said, how many fish you caught? When I get this one I'm after and six more, I'll have seven. (laughs) He didn't have nothing. But he had faith to get something. Wilma's mom said, she will walk again. And she encouraged her. And when Wilma was nine years old, they took the braces off and gave her crutches. And she fell down on the floor in the doctor's office. She got up and the doctor said, ma'am, she will never walk. Her mother said, she will walk again. Talk faith to people. Hey Amen. We need to talk about the good stuff. Say good stuff. good stuff. We need to talk about the good things in life. We have enough negative things. We border this morning on a nuclear war. We have all kinds of things happening in the world. But God is a big God, and he cares about people, and he's going to help us. Amen. Amen. He's going to answer prayer. He's going to give victory. And so Wilma's mother talked to her, said, you will walk again. When she was nine years old, it took the braces off, put those crutches on, and she had a terrible time. When she was about, I think, 12 or 15, she ran a race in the town. People said, why is that girl crippled running that race? The race was over. The girl that won the race already got the prize, and Wilma was still coming down the track, falling down, getting up. Falling down, getting up, and finally got to the finish line. You know what she said? I finished the course. I didn't win, but I finished the course. We got to finish the course. We got to do what God said do. And if we listen to God, God is there to meet our need. God is there to answer prayer. Amen? I'm writing a new book about miracles and what God's doing, I, I'm so excited about it. I got a lot of pastors going to be in it. It's a story of God things. God is so big, you know. I Sometimes I look back on my own life and see the miracles that God did and how God did it was unbelievable. 
When my wife was young, we had three kids, young kids, and uh, my wife uh, had cancer, ended up in the hospital, her stomach was eaten up with cancer. They had tubes there and they didn't do things in those days like they do today with cancer. And they had all those things in her body, feeding her through the veins. And it went, I prayed for her every day, I prayed and prayed. And the more I prayed, the worse she got. How many believe the devil will give you a bad time? Amen. But you're the winner. Amen. Amen. God said, you're victorious. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I prayed every day and nothing happened. And one day I came to the hospital. i never forget it. Prayed with my wife. And the nurses said to me, said, she's been unconscious all day. We believe this is her last day. I said, thank God she's healed then. She's leaving. They thought I was nuts. They called the doctor. He came down. He whispered something to a nurse's ear, and she gave me a pill. I wasn't even sick. You know, they trick you. In a way. That's why they say practice in medicine. They're not good at it. So they're just practicing. And so anyway, I put everybody out of the room, and I prayed for my wife. She opened her eyes and she said, I want tea and toast. <laughs> she couldn't have tea and toast. They were feeding her through the veins. Oh, man, it was a crazy night. A Wednesday night, they called the doctor and he was there. And so he just said, I, I don't know. I, I, I would just have to make some tests. And so they did it's all day Thursday, all day Friday. And to make a long story short, on Saturday morning, without a wheelchair, without a walker, only the help of my arm. She was very wobbly because she couldn't, hadn't walked for a while. We walked out of that hospital while the doctors and nurses were clapping. She was healed by God's power. <laughs> Hallelujah! You see, you put God first in your life, he'll take care of the other things. And that's the way Wilma's mother did. She put God first. She told her, daughter, you'll be a success. We need to tell our kids they'll be a success. Tell your kids today, you'll be a success. Put God first in your life. He'll take care of you. He'll answer prayer. He'll give you victories. He'll make you a success. He'll make you positive in a negative world. Amen? Yeah. So we have to talk to that way. We got to believe that way. And Wilma's mom just did that. And she then finally, she won that race in her hometown, didn't win it, but she got through it. And everybody knows that in 1960, they had the Olympics. And Wilma Rudolph ran in the Olympics, and it was on every newspaper in the world. It was on radio. Her name was spread throughout the world. Wilma Rudolph got four, three or four gold medals. And she won the Olympics, and the name said, or the caption said, fastest runner in the entire world. <laughs> Hallelujah. She won the Olympics. And so I think when I think about that in 1960, that's a, that's a great honor. Because she had a mother that encouraged her and believed God. And that's how she got the gold medals and all of that. Don't compromise your principles. Amen. Believe God. Say, God will see me through. God will help me. If your thinking's wrong, you have to change it. You know, sometimes, one time I was driving my car, and I knew I was on the wrong road, but I didn't want to admit it to my wife. <laughs> I'm married. I was married, you know. I didn't want to admit it to her. You know, women, they'll say something if you do. God made man before he made woman because he didn't want advice. So it just so happened that uh, <laughs> I was on the wrong road. And my wife said, honey, we're going down the wrong road. I said, I wanted you to see this part of the country. <laughs> You've never seen this before. I hadn't seen it either, but that's beside the point. And finally, I knew I had to turn around as I'm on the wrong road. So I said, okay, I'm going to turn around and go back now because you've seen this part and you understand that now. And so I was explaining it to her. <laughs> it was a mistake. 
but I didn't want to admit it. How many ever made a mistake and didn't want to admit it? I was in a home one time, and they served us a lovely meal, had all that silverware. I couldn't figure it all out. So much silverware. And I was eating, and, and my son spilled his milk. And uh, I said, son, you don't spill milk like that at home. He said, we don't have milk at home. <laughs> well, anyway, I got after him. I said, don't do that again. They said, no problem, you know, and all that was a problem. So finally, I spilled my milk. I said, I didn't touch it. It just fell over. <laughs> we always try to blame something else when something don't work. Let's take advice from God's word. Think on good stuff. Believe him, trust him, change our thinking. They had a man on TV. They said, you were a millionaire and you went broke. What happened? He said, well, I, um, I made some bad mistakes in finances, and that's why I went broke. But they said, six months later, you're a millionaire again. How did that work? He said, well, what happened was I... I changed my thinking. Sometimes we have to change our thinking. The Bible said here, think on good stuff. Believe God will help you. Don't focus on the past. Focus on the future. You say, well, this happened to me five years ago. Don't worry about that. God will forgive you. God will help you. Amen? Amen. Focus on the future. So I'm going to look for the good things. I do that every day. I talk about good stuff. I prayed this morning for this church. For your pastors, I love them and their leadership. And I love what God's doing here. And I praise God for you. And I prayed this morning and thank God for you. Sometimes we have to do that. And I do it very often, all the time, believe in God. Because I believe we have to focus on those kind of things. We don't magnify the problems. I live looking for answers. I told I was, uh, I was on the airplane and... They upgraded me to first class. There are eight seats in first class. We're eating breakfast, and uh, I, nothing was happening, so I decided to make something happen. Because when nothing's happening, I have to have something happening. It just, I, I'll make it up. Sometimes I don't even know what, how I'm going to finish it. I just make it up on the spot. So I asked this lady beside me who was eating breakfast, you want to buy my yogurt? I just made it up. She said, no, I have yogurt. So I reared up in the seat and asked the two people behind us in first class, you guys want to buy my yogurt? They said, no, we have yogurt. I asked the guy across the aisle, you want to buy my yogurt? He said, no, I have yogurt. And I heard somebody say, why is that man selling his yogurt? <laughs> Flight attendant came down the aisle, said, you want to buy my yogurt? She said, I said to her, she said, buy your yogurt. Why are you selling the yogurt? We got all kinds of yogurt. I said, well, on orange juice, it said, drink for your health. So I drank it. On the yogurt, it said, sell before July 10th. <laughs> they don't want you to eat that stuff. They won't just sell it. Ain't no good anyway. And so anyway, <laughs> she said, well, we got all kinds of Stuff like that. And somebody said, why are you selling the yogurt? I said, I'm eating now. They're, you know, they're a captive audience. They can't leave. I was late to a prison just the other day where I was speaking. I told the warden, I'm sorry I'm late. The plane was late. He said, that's all right. They're still here. <laughs> so sometimes it don't hurt to be late. But anyway, it was kind of cool. And so finally... It was something else. When I got done eating, I knelt down in the, uh, turned around in the seat so the lady beside me could hear me, the two people behind, and the four people across the aisle. And I gave my testimony of what God did in my life. I shared my faith. I didn't preach to them. I just shared my faith of what God did in my life. That was so exciting. Hallelujah. And the guy sitting over there said, that's the best I ever heard. He said, I'm a Baptist preacher. He said, I'm going to start selling yogurt. <laughs> That's not the answer. But the answer is to have faith and believe God and share your faith. When they had on United Airlines and a lot of airlines, they had a strike several years ago. It was something else. Nothing was going right. And they the planes and all that, the pilots uh, striking and so on. 
We sat on the runway for three hours. The food was gone, the water's gone, the bathrooms are a mess, the kids are crying, screaming, a terrible thing. And I told the flight attendant, talk to the pilot. I was only a nine million mile flyer then. But I said, talk to the pilot and tell him that I need to talk to the people. I'll, I'll help the pilot. And so the pilot come back and talk to me. He wanted to know what he gonna do. I said, I don't know, I'm gonna do something. I said, if you want me to keep going, just tell me to keep going. If not, go like this and I'll quit. He said, okay. So I took the mic and I said, you know, I'm a passenger like the rest of you. I don't like sitting out in the runway for three hours. I know the water's gone and everything. Kids are hollering and everything. I don't like this kind of thing either. I said, my first flight years ago, I spent the whole time in the restroom. I wasn't even sick. But I said, every time I got up, a little sign flashed, please return to seat. So I sat back down. <laughs> I said, and I got them laughing, and we were talking about stuff. Then I, after a while, I'd tell them a few jokes. And then I started witnessing to them and told what God did in my life. And I said, God bless you. I'm going to pray God will help you. And I sat down. And uh, the, uh, one of the flight attendants came up and said, there's a lady back here who wants you to pray for her. So I went back and prayed for her. And the man said, would you pray for me too? So I started prayed for him. And I prayed for all kinds of people on the plane. And finally the flight attendant said, listen, church is over. <laughs> said, you, you've got to sit down. We're going to leave now. <laughs> and I had a chance to witness. Everybody can do something like that. Can you say an amen? amen. Fill your mind with good stuff. Good input. Say, I'm going to believe God. I'm going to trust God. I'm not going to magnify the problems. God is bigger than any problem you'll ever have anyway. Amen. Amen. God put a force in you, a power in you, that is greater than any power or negative force that the devil can ever put against you. And God will give you victory when you put him first in your life. When you serve him and say, I'm going to focus on God. I'm going to believe God. Some people have problems. They, they got too many problems. How many know that? You go in a, I was in the airport and standing like six feet apart, you know. And the guy turned around and said, back up. You ever had that happen? <laughs> I, I was too close, so I backed up. I thought, man, this is crazy. And you get on the plane, you're sitting in three people's laps. That stupid mask on, made in China. They figured out that the China virus came from China. That's what they said. It didn't come from Hong Kong. But anyway, I, th I think about these kind of things. It's just so crazy. There's so many crazy things happening. If you're in a line, I was in a line one day and I cleared my throat. I went, <coughs> and everybody moved away. Now I learned how to get in line. Just cough a little bit, and everybody get right out of the way. You, you'll have the whole thing to yourself. That's what I learned. <laughs> Amen. But anyway, God is so big, and we can't magnify the problems. We have to believe God, because God put that power in us to believe him, to trust him, to look for miracles, to seek realistic goals. Say, I'm going to win somebody to Christ. You know, I think it's good for everybody to win somebody. I'd be thrilled if Pastor Terry would give me a call and say, Ken, you know what? You preached on Sunday, and everyone in that service won only one person. They didn't win the whole city. They just won one person and had them in church on Sunday. Amen. Amen. Maybe the pajama crowd will even show up. <laughs> Maybe those, you know, watch on TV. But God is so good. And he is trying to help us. Let's be a positive force in a negative world. There's enough negative things going on. Let's trust God. I always look for ways to help somebody. I always look for ways to witness to somebody. Talk to somebody about the Lord. Lead somebody. I was on a plane one day, and I came out of D.C., and I noticed this guy that got on. I knew immediately that he's with the CIA. And my son was in the CIA for a while, so there's something I knew. And uh, he sat down beside me, and we talked a little bit. And he said, you're going to Seattle? I said, yeah. He said, me too. We're on the same plane. They always wonder where you're going. You're on the same plane. I don't get it. 
That's kind of, you know, people ask crazy stuff. I said, my birthday, December 8th. One guy said, what year? I said, every year. <laughs> I have it every year. You lived in Yakima, Washington all your life? Not yet. I'm still here. <laughs> people are crazy, you know. <laughs> and so I, I sat there a little bit and, and uh, he said, what do you do? And I said, I'm with the CIA. He said, really? I said, yeah. Yeah, I, he said, what branch? I said, you wouldn't believe it. It's high up. It's really high, high. I can't tell you how high it is and who's in charge. He said, really? I said, yeah, I'm gonna read my instructions after a while and I'll, I'll read them to you. He said, okay. So finally I took my Bible out of my briefcase and I opened it up. He said, that's a Bible. I said, yeah, B-I-B-L-E, it's a Bible, it's a bestseller, and uh, my instructions are here. He said, I thought you were with the CIA. I am. He said, well, what branch are you with? I said, uh, Christian in action. <laughs> How many are with the CIA this morning? <laughs> Hallelujah. When you put God first in your life, you're with the CIA. To tell somebody today, I'm with the CIA. I use everything. I talk to everybody about Christ. I talked to the football guy the other day. He said, you ever play football? I said, I can't play football. I'm a Jew. <laughs> Pigskin, you know, you get it. But anyway, you get it on the way home. God is a big God, and I'm going to keep believing him and trust him and believe I can touch somebody's life. My father taught me some things when I wasn't even a Christian. My dad taught me how to tithe. My dad, when somebody gave us a box of apples, somebody to do that, to bless my dad, I guess, us kids had to count the apples, and 10% of them were given to the pastor. Right. Wasn't that something? Somebody bought my dad a suit. He'd find out what it cost and pay tithe on the suit. Yeah. If somebody, and somebody did give him a car one time, and he got it appraised and paid tithe on the car. I thought that was stupid. As a kid, until later in life, somebody gave me a car, and then that old brother, you got to go get it appraised, see what it's worth. I'll pay tithe on it. My dad taught me all those kind of things. And my dad was tough. My mom, she'd always say, God's going to use you to touch millions of people. I said, I'm not going to be in ministry. I never planned to be in ministry. But my dad said, if you don't get saved, God's going to kill you. He was tough. I had some tough experiences growing up. Even when I was in the third grade, I spent three years there. <laughs> they wouldn't put me in fourth because my dad was in there and grandpa was in fifth, so they wouldn't raise me, you know, and they kept me there for three years. But anyway, I had some tough things. And one day I was on the farm on a tractor and lightning hit my watch. Never hurt me, but knocked me off the tractor. I said, Dad, lightning hit me. He said, I told you God's going to kill you. <laughs> That's how tough my dad was. He said, probably by Saturday. <laughs> Worried the life out of me. Then I was 17 years old and I was dating a policeman's daughter. <laughs> I can say this. When you want a policeman, you can't find one. When you don't want one, they jump right out of the trunk and give you a ticket. I got stopped one time. I did. I got stopped in Texas. I was speeding. I wasn't paying attention, doing 90 mile an hour in the 70 zone. And uh, everybody's asleep at 3 o'clock in the morning in Texas. Everybody, except me and God and that cop under the bridge. <laughs> and he chased me and stopped me. And, he looked in the window and said, I, I've been waiting for you. I said, I got here quick as I could. <laughs> well, it's a long story what happened after that. But anyway, things happen like that. I was one time, I made a U-turn. I don't know where. The, when you want a policeman, you can't find one. When you don't want one, they jump right out of the trunk and give you a ticket. So I, I made this U-turn in this cop. I don't know where he came from. I never did know. And so I know, don't do this. 
But I jumped out of the car and I ran back to his car. <laughs> he said, sir, you can't get out of the car. I said, yeah, I just did. <laughs> he said, you can't do that. I said, hello, I'm here. What can I do for you? He said, sir, you have to stay in the car. You can't do that. I said, I just did. He said, you can't make a U-turn here. I said, I didn't want to. I wanted to go straight. But the sign said, no, you turn here. <laughs> so I turned back around. And this is the truth. i never forget this. I don't know what happened, but he said, just get out of my face. <laughs> so I made a U-turn, went the other way. And he, he didn't know what happened. He's probably still there. But anyway, <laughs> negative things happen. But we've got to learn to put a positive twist on it. Some way we've got to live on the good side. Some way we've got to think about the good things. The Bible said, think on these things. I want to think about good things. I want to praise God for winning souls. I thank God for people that win souls, people that believe in winning, people who believe in God doing miracles. Can you say an amen to that? Amen. We've got to think about those kind of things. Let's do that this morning. Let's start believing God more than ever. Let's say God is a big God. I know he's going to answer prayer. He's going to help me. He's going to open the windows of heaven. He's going to give me victories in my life as I put him first in my life. Amen? Amen. Let's start doing that right now and start believing God like never before. I want you to bow your head with me for a moment. I believe that God wants to touch our life in a special way. Our job is to trust God and to believe him in a positive manner. Believe that he will help us and guide our life and lead us in the way we ought to go. From this moment on, we're going to trust God. Even in negative times, we're going to believe for positive things to happen in our life. Let's believe God like never before. If you're here today and you don't know Christ, I just want to pray for you. And I want God to touch your life. If, you know, I love honest people. I, I just feel the presence of God in this house. God is here. He showed up today. He does every time. But if you, something in your life would keep you out of heaven, and you'd like us to pray for you today, remember you in prayer, would you just raise your hand so I can just see you, that you're here? See, I need God to turn things around in my life. You that raised your hand, just stand where you are. Just stand up right there. I'm going to pray for you right now. I believe God will help you. Just stand up right there. I believe God will help you turn things around. You could really use a turnaround in your life. Let's pray together. Say, dear Jesus, I'm coming to you. You said if we come, you wouldn't turn us away. That means you accept us. Forgive me and help me. From this day on, I'm going to believe you for answers. I praise you now that you're Lord of my life. While you're standing, there are other people here that face needs. You love God, but you are a Christian and you just need some answers in your life spiritually, emotionally, physically or financially, or with your family, I want you to stand and believe God with me right now. I believe these that are getting up all over, the ones that God's going to do something for. Let's believe God together this morning. Let's trust him right now. Say, Jesus, I thank you that you're answering prayer. Lord Jesus, I thank you right now in this church, Lord, for what you're doing. I give you praise. I honor you today. I glorify your name. You said if you be lifted up, and we lift you up today, we're putting you first. We're thinking about the good things. You said think on these good things, and we're trying to do that today. We're not going to think about negative stuff. We're going to think about good stuff and believe you from this day on. Whatever need they face today, that you will answer and give victory in every life. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Can you do that this morning?
Hallelujah. We're on God's side. We're on the Lord's side. We can thank him today. Start believing him. How many want to be a soul winner? Let me see your hand. Stand up with me right now. I just believe God will empower you to witness to somebody this week. Is that okay? Believe God. Pastor, come and lay your hand on my shoulder. I believe in your prayers. Let's believe God right now. Lord, thank you for opening doors for people to witness and to share their faith. Thank you for what you're doing right now in every life. We give you praise, Lord, that we'll share our faith this week, that we'll talk about the good stuff. Forget the bad stuff. Think about the good things you said. And we want to do that from this moment on. In the wonderful name of Jesus, we praise you today. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand to praise. Him. We're going to have our ushers come. We're going to receive a special offering for Brother Ken. Come all the way from... Washington, not Washington, D.C., but came from the state of Washington to just be with us. How many of you laughed at least once today? <laughs> Joy is like a medicine to your soul. Amen. I tell you, sometimes we just need a, a good laugh. And uh, we just want to uh, receive a special offering and just show him that we appreciate him and thank him for coming our direction. God, I just pray over Ken. I pray over his family. Just pray that you would just bless him. Lord, that he would just continue to win souls for you, oh God. Lord, let his words be encouraging to us today. And bless this offering now in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You can just write a uh, guest speaker uh, right on that offering. Uh, if you put in cash, it'll just go to him. Uh, on a, uh, If you give it online or text to give. You can just check uh, guest speaker, all right? Can we worship the Lord? Let's just worship the Lord for a moment. today. God, I just thank you. I pray your blessing on us as we leave out of this place. I pray especially that we would be soul winners this week. God, we thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for just new blessings every day. Now bless us and keep us in the palm of your hand as we leave out of this place. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We love you.